This here is a 172 scale Sherman Firefly FX model set. It's a tank that was produced by the British towards the end of the Second World War in 1944 and 1945. It's based on the US M4 Sherman but was fitted with a 3 inch 17 pounder anti tank gun and also had a coaxial 7.62mm Browning M1919 machine gun mounted to the front. The Firefly was used in the Normandy landings and was highly valued due to its ability to penetrate the armour of the Tiger and Panther tanks used by the German army. In the box we get the instructions, which have some information about the model, two sheets of parts, the decals, a paintbrush, some poly cement glue and three paints, in black, khaki drab and gunmetal. Here you can see me cutting out and then gluing all the parts for each step together. I carefully remove each part with the side cutters and then use a knife to cut down the gates, trimming the plastic flush with the part. I'm using Revel's plastic glue rather than what came with the set, just as I prefer having the long nozzle. I find it much easier to get the glue into the right place using it. Then later on you'll see me using tweezers just to help get some of the smaller parts into position correctly. In this set, the tracks are just one solid piece, so no additional assembly is required there. It's a shame not to have more parts for this, but it is just an entry level set. You can see I keep some of the large sections separate for now, and this is just to make painting easier, especially on the tracks where there are several colours on small details. For the turret, you have to be careful when gluing it together, as you want the barrel to be able to rotate up and down in order to adjust its angle so you must make sure not to get glue on that part and only the surrounding enclosure. Now onto painting. I start by applying a base coat of the included khaki drab to the body of the turret of the tank using a size 4 Avoco brush. I like using this brush for painting larger areas, especially when putting down the first coat as I find that it holds paint well. This takes me just under 15 minutes to do and then I move on to paint the tracks. I'm doing these in track colour, which is Humbrol number 173, using a size 1 Colero brush. These are general purpose brushes, although more suited to acrylic paints, but they're just what I have to hand and work fine for this. I'm leaving the wheels and supports inside the tracks alone for now, and I'll come back to paint those in khaki drab once this paint has dried. Then there's just one small piece left here to do, which I'm painting in gunmetal. After leaving this first coat of paint to dry, I'm back to apply a second coat, this time starting with the tracks, making sure that I get paint into all of the gaps along the track itself. Then back onto the body and turret of the tank. Going over them in khaki drab again, I actually paint the inside of the upper body part as I realise that part of it will be visible from underneath the model once fully assembled. After finishing off the turret, it's back to the tracks this time painting the wheels and supports inside with khaki drab, being careful not to get any of this paint onto the already painted tracks. I'm using a size 00 Colero brush for this, just to get more control with the finer bristles. I'm back a few hours later now, having left the model to dry again, this time to paint in the black edges of the wheels. This is a very fine detail, so I'm using the small size 00 000 Palpo brush for it. It's especially important to not get black paint on the other colours as it's more difficult to paint over being so dark, but I'm careful and manage to do it well. Then onto the fine details on top of the body of the tank, all done using the same palpa brush again. I start by applying gunmetal to the various axes and other tools on the tank and also paint the barrel of the machine gun in gunmetal too. Then I glue on the other small gun metal piece from earlier. After this, I go and get some natural wood enamel paint, which is Humbrol number 110, and use this to paint the handles of the two axes on the tank. Then it's just gluing together the final sections of the model and finishing off the painting by fixing some minor errors I made along the way. Especially with the small gunmetal pieces, it's very easy to go over the edges and get some on the main body, which should be khaki drab. So I'm just covering that up now. That's it for the painting. After leaving it to dry once more, it's on to applying the decals. I've got a bowl of warm water here to put each decal in after cutting it out from the sheet. 
leaving it in for about 45 seconds and then taking it out and sliding it onto the model. You can see I wet the area I'm going to apply it to beforehand just to make getting it into place a little easier and then I use the brush to position it. Once done, I'll dab it with some kitchen roll just to dry the area. On one of the smaller decals, it actually gets pushed away by a large drop of water before I have a chance to dry it. So, I just need to reposition it in the right place. And after finishing that, I think it's looking pretty good. Only thing I'll be doing now is giving it a coat of matte varnish to help seal it. But in the meantime, you can see here what it looks like. For the varnishing, I'm using Humbrol's enamel matte varnish, which is number 49. With this, you've really got to make sure it's thoroughly mixed before applying it, as it has a tendency to separate out into a solid and liquid layer. So before this, I gave it a good stir, breaking up any lump and making sure it has an even consistency. Then I'm just applying a very thin layer all over the model, making sure to cover every surface evenly. You have to be careful not to allow a thick layer to build up in any of the divots of the model, as this may become opaque, which is why thin coats are important. And here is the finished tank. I'm very happy with how it turned out, and I think the final result is very good. The fine details painted in gunmetal came out really nice, and the decals are a great addition too. The model can be easily posed by rotating the turret side to side, as well as by moving the barrel up and down. This was good fun to put together, and I hope you enjoyed. Please leave any feedback below, and thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.